Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be talking about an intro to containers on Azure. With containers, it's often best to compare these to virtual machines to give a point of reference to show the similarities and differences between virtual machines and containers. Virtual machines are a very familiar concept in IT and containers are becoming so, but understanding the differences and similarities will help understand the context of containers and what they're really trying to accomplish. Now, with a virtual machine, you start off with a host operating system and that host operating system is the one that is gonna be responsible for running all of the virtual machines on top of the the actual physical hardware that is running the particular hypervisor, whatever it might be. Now, containers also have a host operating system as well. And so they're very similar in this respect that they both need some kind of base operating system to work. Now, the next layer on a virtual machine stack is the hypervisor. And the hypervisor is what provides the hardware abstraction for the virtual machines to run. Similarly, in the container context, there is the container engine. The container engine is responsible for providing all the abstractions from the host operating system to the containers so the containers will run. They diverge though on the next layer on virtual machines, which is a guest operating system. Now the guest operating system in a virtual machine interacts with the hardware abstraction layer provided by the hypervisor. So the guest operating system then is actually interacting with virtual hardware, while in containers, the virtualization isn't so much a hardware abstraction layer, rather it's a kernel abstraction. And what this does is it allows you to eliminate the need for a guest operating system within the context of a container, but the trade-off with that means that the container is inherently married to the operating system family of the host operating system. So in other words, a container that runs on Linux has to be a Linux container. A container that runs on Windows has to be a Windows container. However, a virtual machine uh, context means that a host operating system can be Windows and it can run a Linux virtual machine. So the by eliminating the guest operating system, you have a trade-off there, but what you end up doing is actually reducing the overhead that a container needs to run because you don't have the overhead of a guest operating system in the context of containers. But Short of that, they, they converge after the layer of a guest operating system where you have libraries on top of the guest operating system and you have libraries on within the context of a container. Then on top of those libraries, you'll have apps that are running. And then on top of the libraries and containers, you have your apps running there as well. So the basic difference between the containers and virtual machine is where they do the abstraction. So summarily, Virtual machines interact with a hardware abstraction. Containers interact with a kernel abstraction. When we talk about containers, understanding the critical components of what makes containers work is imperative to understanding how you go about creating containers and then how you get those running inside of a container runtime of some kind. Now, a container is essentially a, an encapsulation of an application. So what we're really trying to do with containers is take an app, package it in such a way that I can easily distribute that application in any container runtime. And there are multiple container runtimes out there that we're going to mention. Now, it all starts with a local dev environment. I have my app, it's ready to run, and I need to package it as a container. And so we start with something called a Docker file. Now, a Docker file is essentially a script that tells us how to take an app and put it into a container image and configure that container image to run. Now, Docker files are specific to Docker containers, but by and large, Docker containers make up the 99 percentile of all things containers anyway. So generally speaking, when somebody's talking about containers, they're talking about Docker containers. However, there are other container formats out there that are used. However, most of them are using Docker containers. A Docker file is simply just goes against a Docker runtime that is running in your local dev environment, and you call a command Docker build, and it converts that that app and then uh, all the associated libraries into a container image and it builds that image and that is on your local dev environment and then what you do with the that image is you take a copy of that image and you do a docker push and that docker push takes that image and sends it up to a container registry now a container registry is essentially a repository for images to reside and so they can be used by container runtimes so 
any version of an image or any old versions of an image or new images go up to a container registry, which is simply just storing the binaries for the actual container image. And once they're on that container registry, they can be accessed by a container runtime. In other words, they can be downloaded from the container registry to the container runtime, whatever that might be. And that's usually done by way of some kind of run command. And that run command can be a Kubernetes deployment. It could be something that is deployed into Azure App Services. It could be on your local dev environment using Docker Run. It can be any number of things. The container runtime will then reach out to the container registry and download a copy of that image. And then it will take that image and then actually start executing it as a container. So this basic process of going from Docker from a code to a Docker image on a local dev environment, pushing that up to a container registry, then downloading it to a container runtime, and then taking that container image and actually running it as a container is this basic workflow that all things containers follow, regardless of what the dev environment looks like, the container registry being used, or the container runtime being used. There are a number of ways to run containers on Azure, and we're going to look at these in future videos on Tech on Fire, but the most basic one is Azure Container Instances, which basically allows you to run one-off or uh, multiple instances of containers that are easy to create within the Azure portal or through uh, a CLI. The more flagship offering on Azure for running containers is Azure Kubernetes Services, or AKS. It's a full-blown uh, Docker stack that it uses Kubernetes orchestration. It's fully compatible with all things Kubernetes, but it also has some tight integrations with Azure that allows you to run a Kubernetes stack on Azure without having to do a lot of configuring of Kubernetes. It's actually a fully managed service, so you don't have to actually spin up the clusters or anything like that. So it's a really nice offering for doing uh, containers in the cloud and specifically within the context of Azure. Another offering that we've done a video on already is Azure Web Apps for containers. And this allows you to basically run a containerized application in the context of an Azure Web App. And this can be run on Linux and Windows. And lastly, there are containers that can be used for big data workloads and batch processes with Azure Batch with Batch Shipyard, which is an add-on to Azure Batch that allows you to run uh, containerized workloads within the context of Azure Batch. So we're going to do videos on each one of these in the future and then also talk about uh, some of the more details of Docker files and we're going to be doing uh, a deep dive into Azure Kubernetes Services specifically because it's a rather broad topic so it's going to take multiple videos to cover that as well. For my demo for this video I want to run a Docker file to build a very simple Docker image and then push that to a container registry. And then I'm going to use Azure Container Instances as my container runtime. So I'm going to demonstrate that full container workflow with a very simple demo here. So this is my Docker file that I'm using in this demo and it's based on Ubuntu. So every Docker file starts with a from command. It can be from scratch, which means that it's starting from nothing, or it can be from another image. In this case, it's using Ubuntu, the Ubuntu distro that is running on a Linux container, and it allows me to build a image from another image. And basically what I'm doing in this, this Docker file is I'm installing Apache, which is a web server. And once I have that uh, patchy web server installed with that command, I'm taking a file, an HTML file, and copying that to the the root directory for Apache, and basically saying, use hello as my um, HTML, hello HTML as one of the files in that, and then I can point to a URL uh, that's going to be running on port 80, and that will then serve up this page here, or the default page, and then basically tells the container runtime to execute this command, the concatenation of all of these right here, whenever the container starts, so Apache uh, 2TTL-D foreground, so that basically makes Apache run in the foreground rather than as a service, so the container doesn't exit. Um, with this basic file, I can create a container image, push that to Docker Hub, and then I'm going to use Azure Container Instances to actually run this container image once it's created. I am here in my Windows terminal and I'm in the folder that contains my Docker file. Now if I type in dir you will see here that I have 
my Docker file and there's my hello.html file that I'm going to be used when I, using to build this image with. So to build this, I'm simply going to call docker build and I'm going to use a dash T command when basically I'm going to tag this image to push it so that I can later push it to a repository. And this, because I don't specify the full URI for the repository, it's going to default to Docker Hub. So I'm going to call this ACI demo and put it in this repository, blaze slash ACI demo. And then I'm going to use dot to indicate that I'm going to use the local Docker file in this folder. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. It'll do, run really fast since I've actually already built it. But the output for the uh, image build would look something like this. And you would see the um, successful build of this. And then you would see it tagged like as such. And then you will get a security warning if you're run building a Linux in, uh, image on Windows. But in any case, that's fine for this purpose. And then now that I have this build, I'm going to call Docker push. And in this case, I'm going to push blaze slash ACI demo. And this is going to upload this image to Docker Hub. Now that that's done, we can go over to Docker Hub and we can see this image in the repository. Now that I'm here on my browser, I've got Docker Hub pulled up at hub.docker.com slash u slash blaze. And here I have blaze slash ACI demo. This is the one I just pushed a few seconds ago. So if I go into this repository, you can see here that I can uh, see what is going on inside of this image, basically showing the latest tag when it was built, the uh, architecture was built for and the size. Now, if I was to connect this to a GitHub repo or something like that, I could uh, attached to it docker file and show all the source code that was used to build this image I haven't done that for this image nor have I put in a description or anything like that for it but you get the idea that this is now on docker hub I'm here in the Azure portal and I'm going to create a container runtime for the container I just pushed to docker hub so I'm going to use container instances so I'm going to come down here to containers and select container instances and this is going to pull up the configuration for this particular image uh, instance of containers. Now I'm going to call this container name ACI demo one and put it in East US and I'm going to select public or private. I'm going to select public. Now with a private registry, I can have images that are for my own use only internally for my applications. If I want to, that's called a private registry and a public registry is something that is accessible to anyone over the internet. Um, and in my case, I'm using Docker hub. So that is a public registry. And because I'm not using a image, I'm not using a public registry that I created is going to default to Docker hub. So I can use blaze slash ACI demo. I don't have to put in the full blown URI for this image name here. I can just put in blaze slash ACI demo and it'll, it'll understand that I intend to use Docker hub. Now I can select the OS type. I need Linux for this one because this is a Linux container, but I can create windows containers if I wanted to. And we'll be talking more about windows containers downstream. And I'm going to configure this to use a single core with half a gig of RAM to run this particular container. And um, I put in five gigs of RAM. I want 0.5 gigs of RAM. And that should be more than enough to run this container since I'm just running a instance of Apache with an HTML page. There's really no application code that's going to be running or database or anything like that. Now for networking, I want to include a public IP address, yes, and I'm going to expose port 80 since I didn't configure this container to use SSL. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it blaze demo one or something like that. And it's going to be ecus.azurecontainer.io. And so the combined blaze demo one ecus container azurecontainer.io will give me the URL that I'm going to punch into my browser to pull up my page that I created. I can also configure restart policies like on failure, always or never. Um, and I can also override commands and set environmental variables. Environmental variables in the context of uh, uh, containers are important for injecting configuration data into the container. And they show up as environmental variables that can then be read by applications so that the application can be configured correctly. But I don't really need to set any of this since it's already set in my container. But the, the key value pairs and the, the, the CMD command that we saw in the Docker file can be overridden here if I need to. Now on the next tab, I can set Azure tags, which I'm not going to do. And I'm going to review and create it pass validation. I'm going to click create and then wait for this to deploy. Okay. Now that my deployment is the 
completed, I can go to my resource and I can see that it's up and running here. It's got a public IP address, it's got a fully qualified domain name, and the container is currently running. So I can take that uh, fully qualified domain name and I can punch it in here and I can do hello.html and that should tell me hello world. And there it is. Uh, so that is a end-to-end -end demo for going from a Docker file to an image up on Docker Hub to it running inside of Azure Container Instances on Azure. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.